Well, good evening and welcome to the Smith Center here on the campus of Francis Marion University where we have Peach Belt Basketball Conference action coming your way with our Patriots taking on the Braves from UNC Pembroke, our arch rivals from about 70 miles up I-95. I'm Hubert Setzler sitting alongside Paul McDonald here on the Patriot Sports Network. Paul, how are you doing this evening? Doing fantastic and looking forward to uh, this matchup between two teams sitting at exactly 500 in the Peach Belt Conference. And this will be the last matchup between these two at the Francis Marion University University Center while in the Peach Belt. Both teams are going to move to Conference Carolinas in the following season. So this is actually the swan song for in-conference play for these teams in the Peach Belt. They'll go ahead and become I-95 rivals in Conference Carolinas next season. And I was so happy to hear that both of them were going to move to Conference Carolina uh, together because it's such a big rivalry between these two schools, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Peach Belt Conference foes, similar type schools, very close together, uh, an hour and a half drive max. If you drive like you're driving Miss Daisy, uh, you can get up there and they usually bring a, a lot of fans down here when we play and we bring a bunch of fans up there. So it's a great matchup and that's going to continue on in the future, just not in the Peach Belt. Yes, and uh, those games, as you mentioned, travel really well and in a non-pandemic season, you'd see uh, the University Center today jam-packed, uh, rocking. Uh, with uh, raucous fans from both sides uh, of of the uh, both sides of the border, so uh, it's very very odd to see uh, no fans here today. Considering what a big rivalry this is, and again today they're going to even the score. Both teams sitting at 500 in Peach Belt play. Somebody is going to be under 500, and somebody's going to be above 500 after uh, 40 minutes of play this evening. And uh, you're right, it is unfortunate that we don't have the fan bases here tonight. Hopefully that means that we've got a large listening audience this evening, Paul, and they're going to be able to watch this uh, ball game on the Internet, and we'll do the best we can at uh, illustrating what's going on here. But it's going to be a really interesting evening because these teams are a little bit different. Uh, the Patriots average about 76 points a game. Pembroke, 81 points a game. Patriots are giving up about 77 points. Pembroke only giving up about 75. The huge difference, though, comes in the field goal percentage and the three-point percentage. The uh, Braves do a lot of damage inside the arc, and the Patriots do a huge amount of damage outside the arc. And we'll see what happens tonight w from those positions. That's right. Uh, for UNCP, hitting at below 30% from three-point. Uh, but everything else, uh, they're looking at a field goal percentage of nearly 500. So it's definitely interesting to see how that's going to shake out today, considering uh, Francis Marion's defense and how UNCP uh, decides to counter that. It seems like there possibly is a little bit of a length advantage for this Brave squad, but I wonder if Coach Edwards is going to pack that defense back into some kind of zone or maybe a, a little bit of a lackadaisical man-to-man -to, -man to make them shoot over the top of it. You know what? We've seen a, a versions of all of those things that you've mentioned, Hubert. We've seen uh, some zone. We've seen some man straight up. We've seen a little bit of the lazy man, more like a man kind of drifting into a zone type trap sort of defense so we could see any number of those styles and all those styles defensively this evening for the Pats. The Patriots do mix it up they will go from zone to man to man back to zone a great deal in the games that we've witnessed so far. Paul I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, starting lineups right now because the announcer on the uh, score table is doing it so let's take a look we've got UNC Pembroke the Braves coming in at two and three overall two and two in the Peach Belt Conference starting at guard a 6'4 freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, Trenton McIntyre, number zero. We also have a 6'1 junior guard from Selma, North Carolina, number two, Malik Sanders. We have a freshman forward. They just cut the lights out on me, so I'm going to go ahead and cut our booth lights on here. They've got a 6'6 freshman forward from Charlotte, North Carolina, number five, Cortez Marion Holmes. Also a junior. 5'10 guard from Gibson, North Carolina, number 11, Jordan Ratcliffe. And rounding out their starting five, Spencer Levi. He's a 6'7 senior forward from St. Louis, Missouri. The head coach of the Braves is head coach Drew Richards. Now let's take a look at that 
Patriots starting five. Coming in as our leading scorer, he's a 6'4 junior forward from Alexandria, Virginia, number zero, Langston Gaither. Also, our second leading scorer, a 6'5 senior guard from Rockville, Maryland, number three, Holden Redparth. The hero of the game, which we'll talk about a little bit more as this game progresses, from last week, a 6'2 junior guard from Concord, North Carolina, number 11, Alex Cox. A dominator under the boards offensively and defensively, a 6'5 freshman, uh, I'm sorry, 6'5 sophomore forward from Sumter, South Carolina, number 21, Darius Dawson. And rounding out the starting five in the middle, a 6'7 junior senior uh, center from Eagle Lake, Minnesota, number 23, Ohan Ochan. The head coach for the Patriots is head coach Gary Edwards in his 15th season. Once again, those Patriots are coming in with a Peach Belt Conference record of 3-3, three and three, the Braves with a record of 2-2. Two and two. So this is a big game for both squads that are still fairly early on in this Peach Belt season. There's an opportunity to grab one of those coveted top four spots. Yep, and uh, top four is still up for grabs for both the Pembroke Braves and the Francis Marion University Patriots. And uh, what's really, really key about uh, this matchup here coming up is that really up at the top, things are still up for grabs. Besides Flagler at 5-1, and one, you've got the, the, a logjam of three teams with four victories, Georgia Southwestern, Georgia College, and USC Aiken. And then after that, Augusta Francis Marion with three victories. So the victory column is really super key there. So tallying another one for the Pats gets them right in the mix for second place. That's right. We're only one down in the win column uh, behind some of those fourth place teams or higher. So it's going to be critical. So in the middle for the Patriots right now, we're going to have number 21, uh, Darius Dawson. He's going up against number 14, Spencer Levi. And we're about to start first half action here in the Peach Bell Conference, and here we go. The Braves control the tip-off. Sanders walks it up. Sanders is taking his time. Clearly, uh, the Patriots are, are in somewhat of a zone here so far, and Ochan really working underneath in, in the paint, trying to work against number five, Cortez Marion Holmes. Three-pointer by Sanders, and he opens the scoring on the right wing, knocks it down. The Braves are going to employ some full court pressure. Redparth has to come in and receive the inbounds. He goes down the left side. Tight defense by this Brave squad. Nice job by Redparth to uh, avoid the pressure and bring the ball in up to half court. Ochan with the ball. Dawson deep on the right wing. He looks inside. He gets it to Gaither. Gaither goes baseline, gets up and under, and scores with a reverse layup. Nice athletic move by Gaither. Gaither underneath the rim, had to loop his way around for the reverse lay-in. Uh, nice job by him, 3-2 to two so far early on here, uh, only a minute into this game. Patriots still in that 3-2 zone. Top of the key, three-pointer off the front iron, no good. Levi had a hand on it, but the Patriots come away with it. Dawson knocks it back in bounds to Cox. Dawson, top of the key, sets the offense. He drives left side, goes up with the left hand, and in and out, no good. Levi comes away with the rebound great for the Braves. Great drive by Dawson. He just couldn't quite finish. He was up above the rim. He was ready to tip it in, but maybe just a little bit out of balance. Ratliff resets, settles down the offense for the Braves. Cox in the 3-2 uh, uh, zone. Cox was out up against uh, Jordan Ratliff on that. Still working his Ratliff. Blocked by Ohan. He got a piece of it, went, hit the bottom iron. Cox comes away with the other direction for the Patriots. Nice job by Pembroke to get their, get their men back and uh, make sure that they had numbers to defend the Patriots as they were trying to drive uh, possibly their first quick drive of the game. Nice pass inside. Gaither collects it. He goes up strong. Levi plays the defense, and they're going to call it a travel on Langston Gaither. A couple too many pump fakes must have dragged the pivot foot. And Gaither was working super hard underneath the glass, trying to create a little space, but in the process of creating space, uh, maybe a little juggle step on his part. Uh, the result is a turnover. Uh, the ball goes to the, to the Braves. Nate Dunlop now in the game for the Braves. 
McIntyre goes inside. He gets it to Holmes. Holmes works hard, goes up with the right hand and gets it to go down. Nice teardrop shot by Holmes there to work his way again into the paint. And we're already seeing the efforts by the Braves now to get inside after a couple of early three-point shots. They were successful on one. Opening the game up. Redbarth, quick three, right side, off the front iron, no good. Gaither tried to snatch it away from Holmes, couldn't. And the Braves push it. Step back three by Sanders, no good. Redparth with the rebound. Everything about that shot from Sanders looked good, except once the trajectory of the ball went up, you knew from here it wasn't going down. But the Patriots respond with a nice two for Ochan. Nice little reverse layup there. Holmes goes inside again with the left hand. He's finding some success driving to the hoop against the Patriots. And the Patriots are going to have to figure out that left-handed uh, leap. They may not be too accustomed to uh, a lot of lefties besides Redparth on the squad. So uh, watch for that matchup against Cortez Marion Holmes uh, as he tries to drive the lane. Gaither, turnaround jump shot, off back iron, no good. Holmes with the rebound. He kicks it up to McIntyre, who settles it down for the Braves. Three-point left side, wide open. No good. Gaither with the rebound. Nice pass. Lead pass to Redparth. He drives in strong. Goes up. It's going to be a jump ball. And that will be possession Patriots. Good defense that time. I couldn't see what number that was for the, the Braves. But Redparth was going to take it to the hoop. And he got tied up. And good job by the, by the Braves to not get the foul call. It was all ball. It was all two hands to create that jump ball. So good on them. Uh, normally that results in a foul because of the hand slipping and knocking an offensive player's arm while they have the basketball. At that dead ball, Jamal Edmondson checked in for the Patriots. Ten on the shot clock. Gaither, step back three. Shotzi, he knocks it down and... The game is tied with 15.39 to go in the first half. And Shotzi for sure, that was a super clean shot uh, by uh, Gaither. As soon as it left his fingertips, you knew it was in. Deadlocked at seven early on. Patriots, as we thought, we're going to employ a lot of uh, zone defense to make this team shoot over them. But they've been finding some gaps in the coverage to drive to the hoop. Sanders loses the ball out of bounds. Turnover goes to the Patriots. And that pressure on Sanders uh, was just good enough to deny the ball from uh, the big player, number five, Cortez, Marion Holmes. They were trying to free him up if they could have gotten the ball through, but good on the defense for the Patriots to prevent that. Uh, the result's a ball that's going to go for the Patriots here after, after this break. Absolutely. Uh, we have 15-13 to go in the first half. This score is all knotted up at seven. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Here we are back at the Smith Center on the lovely campus of Francis Marion University. A great evening for basketball. A little chilly outside, a little wet, but it's dry and hot up in here as the Patriots and the Braves are all knotted up at seven with Gaither leading the way for the Patriots right now. He's got all seven points. He's got all seven points, but uh, that explains, uh, that's no surprise really when you consider he's uh, the Patriots' uh, leading scorer. And uh, right now, Langston Gaither averaging 23.8 points per game, so no surprise he's got all seven of the Pats' points here uh, after the first timeout. Checking in for the Patriots, we've got number 30, Javon Anderson. He's making his first appearance in the ballgame. He'll run the point from time to time for the Patriots. Little Ten bit, on the shot clock. A little bit of indecision from Anderson, and the result is that that shot clock is drawing down. Here's Gaither with the ball. And he gets fouled as he drives down the right lane. 
We've been five minutes into this ball game, and that's the first personal foul called, Paul. That's a surprise because uh, both teams have been driving the lane, so I think that what that also speaks to is that both defenses know how to defend without getting in foul trouble, and kaboom, there's another one. How about Jamal Edmondson for that? A little fadeaway there. Levi back in the game for the, Patri uh, for the Braves. He's got the ball. And that's really Edmondson's, uh, Edmondson's shot, that, uh, that mid-range J really works for him. He's tried some three-pointers this season, uh, but that mid-ranger is, is really the best, the best ball for him or going all the way underneath. Unforced error that time by number 11, Jordan Ratliff. A travel, another turnover goes the Patriots' direction. That's only the second turnover by the Braves. Patriots have won themselves. Edmondson drives down, goes up strong with the left hand, too strong, and Levi comes away with a board for the Braves. Boy, he had everything uh, ready to go there, but he was just a little out of balance. So uh, once he was on his way up, he was so busy working his way through to get the freedom that he couldn't quite knock it down. Too strong. Levi gets the offensive board for the Braves. He lost his defender, goes up with a left hand, too strong, and Edmondson comes away with the defensive glass for the Patriots. He gets it to Anderson. Anderson pushes. Good transition defense by the Braves. Anderson puts up the mid-range jumper. Gaither comes away with the missed shot. Patriots reset. Nice rebound by Gaither to pick that, pick up that loose ball rebound. Uh, fantastic job. That's another opportunity offensively uh, for the Patriots to go to work. And Anderson turns the ball over. He tried to make a drive. And Jay Hicks was all over him and uh, put some nice pressure on, and the result is the uh, almost kind of an unforced turnover, but kind of due to, due to some of the kind of the secondary pressure from Jay Hicks. Nice job by him uh, to defend and get the ball back for the Braves. We're going to see Alex Cox check back in the game as Anderson goes to the bench to get a breather. JV and Hicks... Likes to be called Jay with the ball. He gets it inside. Holmes gets shot down, but a three-pointer knocked down by Jay Hicks. Nice job by Jay Hicks. He, he kind of the give and go, get, got rid of it. He shook a little bit of the defense, and, and he got free out of that loose Patriot zone, and he picked up the ball uh, off the pass and drained the three-pointer. Gaither for three, left side. He way too strong. Braves push it. They get it to Levi. Levi goes up strong. Too strong. Can't get it to go down. And a nice offensive rebound and finish by Cortez Marion Holmes. And the Patriots find themselves down by three once again. Good put back by UNC Pembroke there. Uh, pick up the rebound off, uh, off the miss. And then uh, they finish kind of very calmly to get that ball to go down. Again, still surprised at, uh, at the low foul total. Both teams being very, uh, very judicious in their defense. Edmondson, he traveled as he caught the ball, he hopped. And the Patriots now with their third turnover, eight minutes into the ball game. We're gonna see number two, Malik Sanders, check back in for the Braves. And Ohan Ochan back in for the Patriots. And not a whole lot of luck for the Braves when Ochan was underneath. Uh, they were shooting three pointers when Ochan was in the paint. So let's see. There's another three-pointer, but they're going to stop short of going down, down the paint with Ochan. They're happy with that mid-ranger, and it knocks it down. Two points for the, for the Braves on that one. Malik Sanders, pump fake, got the Patriots to bite on it, took two steps in from the three-point line, and buried the 14-footer. Patriots down by five. Cox for three, left side. Shotsy, he knocks it down, and the Patriots are down by two. Nice job by Cox to stop the UNCP rally. Uh, great three-point shot, and that, that had good looks all the way. He was wide open uh, on the defense and scored. They've called a couple of travels on us today, and they stopped in the paint, and that pivot foot slid in the paint, and they did not call that travel. That's a little bit disappointing. Yep, uh, to me, that one could have been a travel. Instead, it's two points for Cortez, uh, Marion Holmes, and uh, sometimes officiating can change momentum here. We'll see if the Patriots can kind of rebound from that one uh, missed call. Pat, bad pass by Ochan, easily stolen away by the Braves, and they come back. Patriots with decent transition defense right there, so the Braves have to back it out. 
Levi has it on the left elbow. He drives in. He goes into the trees, kicks it out, stolen by Cox. Cox takes it down the sideline, can't get any traction, so he has to pull it back out. Gaither with it. I like Cox not forcing it to try to get over the, the half-court line. Instead, he backs up, dishes it to Gaither. Gaither's free, and now they can relax and set up their half-court offense. High screen by Ochan. And Gaither with the three. Shotzi, boy, he was moving to his left and knocked it down. And Gaither has been lethal, lethal so far. And for him, already 10 points on the day. 10 minutes in, 10 points. Boy, that's a, that's a clip right there uh, for uh, Gaither. We mentioned Cox with the steal on the last possession for the Braves. Cox was the hero in the last game. He actually finished off both halves with points, and the last points he got in the second half was off a steal, and it salted the one-point victory away for the Patriots. Holmes inside, gets the ball knocked away, and then he kicks it out of bounds, and it'll go to the Patriots. And love that effort from uh, Cox at the end of both halves. And, uh, you don't want to talk football too much, but it's, there's a little bit of Bill Belichickian uh, mindset there, which is finish the half, start the half strong, finish the game strong. The ends and beginnings of these all makes, they all add up. And they certainly do. And that one actually came, it, it added up to a victory on that case because it was the last points of the ball game with a one point victory. All right, that takes us to a full media timeout with 9.43 to go in this. The Patriots will have the ball down by one when we come back. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Songfonds Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Songfonds Club for their support. Thank you. 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 We have 9.43 to go in this first half of play. Patriots down by one. 15-16 is our score. And this has been a very well-played, disciplined half of basketball so far, let me knock on wood, by both teams. There's only one personal foul in this whole game. And to tell you the truth, I think that's a very, very accurate depiction of what we've been watching here this first half. Yeah, I concur. You know, both teams are playing strong, strong defense, but, but they're being smart not to do uh, use the weak hand checks and uh, poor positioning on their blocking. So uh, all things considered, very, very good. And how about that slip underneath to Alex Cox for the easy deuce? Backdoor cut. Nice look that time by Anderson to find him on that backdoor. And we do take the lead by one. Levi has it. He hands it off to McIntyre. That looked almost like a travel. Ball's knocked away, and Ochan comes away with the steal. Great job by Ochan. It really looks like they're trying to work a lot of this offense through Spencer Levi. So the Patriots have focused in on denying him the ball or slowing the ball to him so he can't work his magic underneath. Dawson gets it to Anderson. With 15 on the shot clock, he resets the offense. Deep three by Anderson. Shots, he knocks it down. And the Patriots with another three. I love that freedom by the Patriots. He, he can step back. And uh, that was, he, he was at least three to five feet Pro, you know, before that three-point line, hey, knocked it down with confidence. That's a good sign for him. Confidence was the key word there, Paul. And another turnover by the Braves. He, he really did. He, he knew he was way behind the three-point line, but he took it up uh, with no qualms about it. Yep, and that's one of those where uh, if it goes down, the coach, coach is a genius. That, that doesn't go down. The coach is telling him, hey, get a better shot, get a better shot. But, of course, uh, you won't see Gary Edwards complaining about that one. Nice job uh, by Edmonds. Or by uh, Anderson. Pardon me, by Anderson. And he gets it inside, and a nice finish by Anderson, who's feeling it right now. That was a nice slip layup underneath a couple of Pembroke defenders. Nice confidence by Javon Anderson. Uh, first, it's three, and then the next time up the floor, uh, the slip there for two points. So a quick five for Anderson. Holmes inside, goes up strong with the right hand, and he gets the hoop and the harm, and he gets an opportunity to get three the old-fashioned way. Good work inside by Holmes. 
and we've talked about good calls. I think that's a good call too. You know, they, uh, Patriots are putting pressure on down underneath, trying to deny the two points. But uh, credit to Cortez Holmes for pushing through that, and now he gets the and one. He's a 54% free throw shooter this season, so we'll see what happens here. He puts it high off, back rim, no good, and Gaither comes away with the board for the Patriots. So no more damage done on that inside. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Braves. It will stay with the Patriots. And that will take us to another media timeout. So the Patriots, with a little run here, have gotten themselves a four-point lead with just under eight minutes to go in this first half. Yeah, earlier on, uh, the Braves up by five, and now for the Patriots, up by four. So it's been very much a back-and-forth battle, and uh, we wouldn't expect any less from uh, two teams with nearly identical records. And with so much to win and lose in this particular ball game, So uh, we expect an exciting finish to this first half. We'll be back in just a moment. When we come back after this break, Patriots up by four with the ball. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Here we are back at the Smith Center on the lovely campus of Francis Marion University. The Patriots have the ball. It's going to be inbound by Redparth on his own baseline. Cox has it deep on the left wing now. Ochan, top of the key. Dawson now. Redparth. Been a little bit quiet offensively here today. Gaither's been shouldering the load. Gaither backs in on the... He goes up and under, blocked away by Levi. Nice denial by uh, Levi there to uh, really, really slow the top score of the Patriots uh, in, in Gaither. We'll have to see if that matchup continues, or maybe Gaither goes in another direction to try to avoid the length of Levi while going up for the score. Well, he'd had good position on Holmes, and Levi came over with the help defense and got the easy block. Number 23, Dewan Lassay checks in. We're going to see a little bit of full court pressure, full, a little full court man here, uh, getting a different look from UNCP. They showed this very, very briefly earlier on in the in the half, uh, but uh, Cox, uh, along with Gaither alongside of him, they easily break it and bring it to half court. Redparth, pump to three, backs it up, takes it left-handed, back iron, no good. On line, just a little bit strong, and the Braves come away with it. They take a three, quick three, no good. Ball's up on the glass and pops out to Gaither. He picks up the defensive rebound. And if we watch really closely while Gaither's moving in, you can see he's never looking at the ball once he dribbles. He, he's trying to handle things. Shotzi and Redparth knocks down the three. Boy, the Patriots have really been doing well from beyond the arc today. Yes, they have, and uh, uh, they're doing it with confidence. These are not luck shots. You can tell that they're, you know, they're they're moving off of a little man defense. Uh, they're getting a, you know, a little bit of rub off the screen. Not a ton of screen, uh, but they're moving enough on the floor to free up enough to get those shots down, uh, such as the one you saw a moment ago. And Redparth had just missed a three, and he got that and said, you know what, I know I can make it. Give it back to me, and he drilled it down. And the uh, Braves come back with a three of their own by number five, Cortez Marion Holmes. And Marion Holmes has really been uh, the, the man of the game for Pembroke. Ten points already. He's already in double digits here uh, with about six minutes to go in the first half. That was a big, big three-pointer for the Braves to stop the bleeding as the Patriots had gone up by seven. Ball was knocked out of bounds by the Braves. Patriots still have it. 15 on the shot clock. Ohan. 
We're going to have a foul holding on the inside away from the ball. That's going to be on number 23. Lassane, he picks up his first personal foul, the team's second. Both teams only with two fouls. I like the way this game has been played. That could have been called a kickball, but Dawson recovers. Cox goes baseline. He backs up, takes the right-hander, no good, and Levi comes away with another rebound. It's knocked away, and Redparth got the rebound, initiated contact, couldn't get the ball up over the rim, but he's going to go to the line, and he'll shoot a pair. Boy, and, and that speaks to the effort of Redparth to snatch it away uh, from Levi and then go immediately to the hoop and uh, puts the pressure on Levi, Levi really out of position. All he could do was foul, and uh, that's what he did uh, just to kind of bail his own self out. Two free shots for Redparth. Redparth, a very good free throw shooter. He's an 86% free throw shooter this season. Southpaw puts the first one up and knocks it down. And definitely not the one you want to be fouling uh, because he can get on a roll. Besides the free throw shooting, uh, he, can, he can get on a roll from underneath. He can get on a roll from three-point uh, range as we've seen in the past. So he's a very lethal scorer that Pembroke does not want to unleash. And he's got five quick points here in the last three possessions. So he's going to come take a little bit of a break. And we're going to see Anderson back in the ball game. But he knocks down both his free throws, five points in the last couple of possessions for Redparth. And that's a good sign for the Patriots. Absolutely, it, because Gaither's going to need some support. Gaither can't score all on his own uh, on that. So uh, for Redparth, and uh, Anderson, who's been kicking in, and a few others, they've got to be able to take that pressure off of Gaither's back once in a while. So Alex Cox picks up his first personal foul, the team's third, and that's going to send number zero, Trenton McIntyre, to the line to shoot two. Yep, and certainly a foul against Cox, but Cox may have taken the worst of it on that foul. You can see him kind of reaching for his head. I think he, he took a shoulder or an elbow uh, to the side of his head during that contact. McIntyre was definitely forcing the issue. He was going to get to the rim, and Cox couldn't get in a very good defensive position. Nice move by McIntyre. He knocks down the first one. He's a 72% free throw shooter. The second one's up, and he buries that one. Loose full court pressure that time, and oh, and it does. It comes up with a steal, and then the Patriots steal it right back. They don't have numbers, but Cox pushes it and loses the ball. Another turnover. So some helter-skelter going on right now. Levi gets it inside, and he gets... We might have an intentional foul here. Let's see if they call it. Well, they just called a warning on head coach Drew Richards, who's trying to advocate for his players for the intentional foul. I think the officials knew that. He didn't have to be as demonstrative, perhaps, but uh, looks like he got a warning. I think that was Anderson who committed the foul, and we're going to see what's going to happen. What we do know is that Levi made the basket, so the basket is good. And here comes the sign. And I don't see a motion for intentional. I don't either. Uh, so I think the consult was to determine that it's just a two-point shot. Uh, it is not an intentional foul. And I know that that's what Coach Richards, Richards is so advocating for. I think he's trying to send yep. a message that that's, that's the call he wanted to see. Well, he uh, got it because they're getting two shots here. So now they two. have switched. We, we did miss the, we did I, miss the motion. I, you know, I didn't see the motion, but uh, uh, here we go. We're going to see two shots, and it, it is an intentional foul. Now Coach Edwards is having some some discussion with the officials. So we'll see if it's two shots in possession or if it's two shots and uh, either way, Levi can tie the score up right here. We'll see who gets possession afterwards. Yeah, and I think the argument from uh, Coach Gary Edwards is that call was originally going to be two, was that he was going to shoot two, but the argument is that, well, the coach, the coach for Pembroke kind of asked for uh, the intentional, uh, but uh, may, maybe, maybe there's a just world here because uh, Spencer Levi actually missed both of his shots. Now, they're still going to get possession, uh, but both of the free shots for Levi uh, were missed. 
And I just got a clarification from the official. He came by and talked to me. He said it was an F2, so no matter whether the ball went in or not, you still get two free throws on a flagrant two violation, and that's what they called. So the midline, uh, mid-range jumper by Radcliffe didn't go down, and the Patriots, after all that commotion, the only thing they got was the Levi basket and no more damage. It could have been a six-point swing there, and the Patriots really dodge a bullet on that flagrant two foul. Yep, could have been a lot worse, so uh, very fortunate for Francis Marion. Uh, Levi missing the two free throws, and then uh, the possession uh, given up to the Patriots as well, so let's see if the Patriots can rebound from uh, that situation. Here comes Cox. Oh, but Gaither got the rebound, and he's going to be fouled on the inside. It'll be possession to the Patriots. I don't think there's any free throws involved there. It'll be on the floor. But good offensive rebounding hustle. Patriots, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the Peach Belt Conference this season. And fantastic effort from Gaither, and that's what draws that foul, is Gaither not giving up on that rebound. Even though that ball had already come nearly to the floor, he gets after it. Pembroke had to foul at that point. Gaither had position had he would have collected it. Dawson drives inside, goes up strong with the right hand. It gets blocked, but he's going to go to the line to shoot two, and that's going to be on number 12, Ty Hurst. No, number 21, I'm sorry. Number 21, Nate Dunlap. And with Dunlap and Levi out there, two six foot seven uh, tall, tall players uh, really defending underneath against uh, the Patriots. Dawson in and out, no good on his first attempt. Dawson hasn't really been to the free throw line a whole heck of a lot this season. He's five of nine, including that last one. He's shooting about 63% from the free throw line. Second free throw's up, off the back iron, no good. Levi picks the defensive glass for the Braves. The Patriots are a very good free throw shooting team. As a team, they're 75%. An uncharacteristic back-to-back -back miss for the Patriots. McIntyre gets it over wide open for Hicks for three, no good. Hurst Dunlop got the rebound, put it up, and then missed Levi, finishes. Nice put back by Levi, and uh, he had to do that balancing uh, jumping around Nate Dunlop, who was on the floor, losing his balance during his defense. So a lot of coordination there for Levi to put that up and not step on Dunlop on the way down. So uh, good on Levi for uh, the put back there. Anderson takes a three, right wing, back iron, no good. Rebound comes away by McIntyre. McIntyre kicks it left wing. Wide open shot. Patriots lost man on defense. Fortunately, the wide open three was missed. Gaither comes away with it, goes up strong with the right hand, no good, on the glass, still kept alive, and Levi finally comes away with it. So a couple of shots by the Patriots won't go down. Inside, Malik Sanders drove down the right side of the lane, put it up on the glass, gets fouled by Alex Cox. He'll go to the line to shoot two, see if he can't break this tie at 27. Timeout on the floor, media. The Patriots going through a little bit of a scoring drought here over the last three minutes. We'll see what happens when we come back after this break. 3-10 to go in the first half. 27-27 is our score. Free throws for the Braves. When we find our way back here to the Smith Center, this is the Patriot Sports Network. The Smallphones Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Smallphones Club for their support. Thank you. 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 Here we are back at the Smith Center. The game has gotten a little bit crazy over the last couple of minutes. The turnovers have increased just a hair. 
Uh, free throw percentage and uh, shooting percentage, I should say, has gone down a little bit. A lot of missed shots here. But we're going to see some free throws by the Patriots, uh, the, by the Braves at the moment. And a lot of hard work by uh, Spencer Levi. Already eight rebounds here. Uh, we're, we're not even finished with the first half. So a lot of players would be thrilled with eight for the game. But instead, uh, eight for him so far. He's been working hard cleaning the glass. Uh, two of those are offensive rebounds, but uh, the other six on the defensive side. And Malik knocks down the first one. He's a 75% free throw shooter this year. A little bit higher than that now because he's seven of nine. Next free throws up, front iron, and he got it to go over the rim. So he gets two for two that trip. And Patriots find themselves down by two with three minutes to go. Dawson triple teamed up at the top of the paint. Now he's underneath. Ochan with the ball. He's going to try to go. Oh, he, was, he gets pickpocketed by Jay Hicks. Nice job by Jay Hicks to snatch the ball from Ochan uh, while Ochan was trying to work his way up to the rim. And Dunlap with an NBA three knocks it down. And that gets Coach Edwards up off the deck. He's going to call a 30-second timeout. So the Patriots had some really good work on that, good passing in that last possession, just couldn't figure out what they wanted to do with it. I think they got to the, the point where somebody just needed to pull the trigger. Yep, and uh, instead they were trying to work the ball around in some triple team and some double team uh, by UNCP. Not afraid to leave somebody open if it means they can pressure the, the basketball and prevent the pass. So good on Pembroke for that pressure there. And uh, Gary Edwards calls a quick timeout. Uh, the offense for the Patriots has been stifled over the last maybe three, four minutes, so kind of a, a quality time for a timeout. He's trying to draw up a little offense and maybe get the team settled uh, into, the, into a calmer half-court offense, which was working really well for them uh, until about at least midway through the half. And the Patriots, really, this is not, I wouldn't say a critical possession, but it's a pretty important possession for them to have at least a good look. Yep, the Patri Patriots down by five, and they had a lead as many, many as five. Uh, but pay, the Pembroke Braves have really cracked down on defense. Redparth goes up strong, puts it up in the hand, no good. And who comes away with the rebound? You got it, Levi. Nice job by Levi. He's cleaning up that glass. And any miss results in uh, Levi scooping up the ball. Possession back to the Patriots now. And we'll see if the Patriots can finally turn this into some offense. Gaither takes the three-pointer. That was way off the mark. A little bit of a rush shot there. He didn't have his feet set. His body was turned sideways, and he just put that shot up. That wasn't what the Patriots needed with only two minutes to go in this game, down, uh, in this first half, down by five, and have gone the last four, five, or six possessions without getting any points. Yep, and uh, I feel like Gaither's shot there was kind of forced because he's the top scorer for the Patriots, nearly 24 a game, so he kind of feels like he has to will the ball in, and uh, that makes for not the best situation. Uh little body up foul by Ochan right there. Ochan picks up his first personal foul underneath. Still no free throws. Holmes gets it over to Levi. They swing it around. Sanders looks inside. McIntyre has it. He spins and he's going to get called for the travel. Good defense by Gaither causing that travel. Yep, and I think it was either going to be travel or an offensive foul. You could see the elbow coming out, uh, putting pressure on Gaither. Gaither hangs in there. Uh, he, he gives up about three or four inches, but instead clean, clean defense, forces the travel, and uh, possession for the Patriots. Anderson fumbled the ball a little bit, but he got control of it, and he sets the offense. 18 on the shot clock. High screen by Ochan. Top of the key jumper. Anderson, no good. I'm not sure that's the shot we wanted either. It was actually a leaning jump shot just inside the three-point line. So, again, another empty possession by the Patriots. Skip pass. And the rim is starting to feel a little bit small uh, for the Patriots. It's starting to feel more like a donut than it does a basketball rim. Uh, they just can't seem to get anything to fall. If the balls are going in or out, in and out. They're clanging the rim. And uh, great defense by Pembroke is the result of those as well. And you can see as Gaither gets tied up, 
can't quite handle the ball. More credit to the Pembroke defense. Not so much a, a lack of offense on that situation. That's credit Pembroke to put that pressure on and force the turnover. That was some good defense by Pembroke. I wish Gaither had pulled it back out and reset a little bit and calmed things down, but he tried to get to the hoop, and that Pembroke defense collapsed on him. Yep, it's kind of forcing it a little bit. A steal. Redparth has it. It's one-on-one. -on -one. He goes up, and it's going to be goaltending. Are they going to call the foul as well? well so now, now they're motioning that was on the floor. He's pointing to the floor. Now, that would be a surprise to me. I really feel like... Uh, so okay, they, so they're going to count that. So he gets the basket on the goaltend, and he's going to go to the line to shoot one to see if he can't get three the old-fashioned way. And... Aside from Gaither, the one person you don't want to put on the line for the Patriots is Redparth. Yep, and just what the doctor ordered, uh, that ball didn't go in on the shot, but boy, could they, they really desperately needed two points to get that ticker to move from 27 to 29, and now a free throw opportunity for Redparth uh, to finish off uh, the uh, three-point opportunity. Patriots now within three. And the free throws up and bottom of the net. It's good. So a big three-point play that time by Redparth pulls the Patriots back within two with only a second separating the shot clock and the game clock. And UNC Pembroke is going to call a timeout. Timeout on the floor, UNC Pembroke. That's a smart timeout, I think, uh, that uh, Coach can see that the shot clock and, and the uh, game clock are just about the same. So instead of trying to force something and possibly give up a shot for the Patriots, I think they're going to they're gonna leak this clock out, take it down to 10 or 9 before they do anything with this basketball. Absolutely, and this will give the uh, coach an opportunity to draw up a particular play, so they'll uh, probably sit here right in front of us, as a matter of fact, and bleed the clock, and then probably with around 9 seconds to go, they'll start running into some kind of offensive situation. And we'll see what kind of play they draw up, and we'll see what kind of defense the Patriots come out with. Are they going to pack it back in a zone and make them shoot over the top, or are they going to come out and man up? You know, I, I think since they know that they're going to leak the clock, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little zone early on and uh, no pressure defensively on the inbound on the inbound passer. So uh, all the defense on the on the players inbound, and we'll see if the Braves can get it in, and they do. And the Patriots are playing some tight defense. And Gaither thought he got all ball, but he caught a piece of the arm. And unfortunately, that's going to be free throws now because of the one and one. But we do have 19 on the shot clock. So the Patriots, if they get a defensive rebound, will have an opportunity to come down to their end of the floor and score. Yeah, and you can see Gaither's dismay. You can see he put his hands on his face. He knows that's not what he was he wasn't trying for defense hard enough to cause the foul, but that was the result. Uh, but as you mentioned, with 19 seconds on the clock, the Patriots now may have a chance to respond after these free throw shots from Trenton McIntyre. It's a one and one, so the first one is important, and he knocked it down. He's a 72% free throw shooter, and he gets the first one, the most important one of the one and one. Patriots need to block out here and definitely corral that defensive glass on a miss. And with the rebound, I think you'd expect a timeout from Coach Gary Edwards here, so let's see what happens there. Especially uh, after they crack the timeline. Uh, it looks like he's going to let it ride. We've got 13 seconds now. We are under 10. Gaither has it. It's five seconds. Gaither takes a long, deep three. Shotsy, he knocks it down. And he stares up into the crowd with a little bit of gravitas as he drills the three, and the Patriots once again finish the half in pretty darn good shape, uh, only down one after going about a four or five minute stretch without scoring many points at all. Yep, and a pro distance uh, three point shot from Gaither. He steps back, drained it from a good six to eight feet from the three point line. Make no mistake, nice backspin, and that ball trickles through the net as the horn sounded. And he had two Pembroke defenders in his face as he did it. He split the defenders with that shot. It was uh, a miraculous shot by Gaither to end this half and the really needed by the Patriots. Uh, I think just getting back within three was huge after you could see things sliding away. But to end up down only by one point here at halftime has got to be a major lift for this squad. Yes, the momentum was clearly on Pembroke's side until about a minute and a half to go. And then uh, the free throws for Pembroke made it even 
even worse with 19 seconds to go. But uh, after those two makes, Gaither comes back calmly, works his way, and then, uh, as you said, he splits two defenders, and uh, with maybe a second to go, that ball left his fingertips, and it trickled the net. No rim, nothing but net. Three points for Gaither while time expires on the first half. And he was... Uh very smirky looking up into the crowd as he walked off the floor. Uh, so uh, I like the confidence of that young man, and boy, we certainly did need it uh, finishing up that particular half. So we'll see what what kind of strategy change or what the Patriots might do or adjust. I'm not the. I think the worst thing they did during that scoreless stretch was their shot selection. Yeah. I think. A, a, before that, everything was pretty clean. Uh, they played really good basketball. During that little stretch, they forced a lot of shots that I didn't think they needed to. Yep, they were forcing shots, and then there were times where uh, they were triple teamed, and you got to credit UNC Pembroke for putting that pressure on, forcing the Patriots to make poor decisions. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned, we'll have to see how the Patriots rebound in the second half, only down by one, and uh, what a breath of fresh air. It was, it was down by five uh, for a good stretch of late in that first half. So for the Patriots to draw it to one on the Gaither three, a fantastic job by them to get right back into this. And we're basically deadlocked at the half. It's going to be a fun second half, I feel sure. Let's take a look at a couple of the statistics from the first half. Obviously, we're at 34-33, Patriots down by one. The, the Braves were 12 of 25 from the floor, 48% field goal percentage. They were 4 of 11 from the three-point line, which is about 36%. 6 of 9 from the free throw line, 67%. They had 18 rebounds. Four of them were offensive. And those stats are in line with their uh, season stats. Uh, not the best three-point shooting team, uh, but from the floor, uh, field goal percentage, the Patriots actually slowed them down. From the floor, uh, UNCP normally at about uh, 60% from the floor, but instead 48%. Uh, from the floor for Pembroke. And pardon me, that's actually about in line with uh, Pembroke's uh, in-season stats. And for the Patriots, they were held to 42%, 43% uh, from the floor. Not the best numbers, but from three-point, uh, just a hair under 500 at six for 13, including that dagger from Gaither to finish the half. And those uh, run along the lines with the Patriots as well. Patriots shooting about 42% from the floor this season, 43% in the first half here with a little bit of an uptick in their three-point percentage at 46. They were 6 of 13 from beyond the arc, 3 of 5 from the charity stripe, 60%, and they had 13 rebounds, three of which were offensive. So those are our first half statistics right now. I know both teams. One last thing I'd like to talk about is, and it really didn't start happening until about midway through the first half of play, UNC Pembroke had 12 turnovers and the Patriots had nine. That's a huge amount of turnovers for both squads in the first half. So we'll see if we can clean that up as well. And I think that'll be the main conversation from both, uh, ben uh, both benches, both locker rooms, especially for Pembroke, because at, from uh, with, with about 10 minutes to go in that first half, super clean, very few fouls, very few turnovers, just a lot of great rebounding and a lot of great clean play. Uh, that clean play kind of disintegrated a little bit uh, about midway in that half, so both teams have some, uh, some easy bullet points to touch on at the break. Absolutely. Well, I think that's going to take us to halftime here. We're going to pause now, take a little bit of a break. We'll be back with just a couple of minutes before second half action to get the stage set for second half Peach Belt Conference action. This is the Patriot Sports Network. Choosing a college isn't easy. There are lots of choices to make and so many variables to consider. How do you know when you've found just the right place? 
The right college will make you feel at home. And that begins with a sense of place. At Francis Marion University, we have a beautiful campus that's safe, well-maintained, and filled with smiling faces. It's the kind of place where you feel you belong, where you wake up in the morning and know that the day ahead will be one you'll savor and enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean life at FMU is easy. There will be challenges. Hard work is expected. We take our academics seriously. You should too. Earning one of our degrees is a real achievement. But some toil, some time invested in a difficult task, that's okay. That's how you grow, how you become someone. FMU is a comprehensive public university. And when it comes to academics, our students have a wide range of choices. We offer more than 75 majors and courses of study. Our professional schools in healthcare, engineering, business, and education are all well-known and respected across the state. At the same time, the arts and the sciences remain the core of what we do. They are the perfect foundation for a successful career and a meaningful life. Programs are important and we'll continue to work to produce new curriculum that meets the needs of our changing world. But we also know that a great education is less about what is taught and more about who is doing the teaching. FMU's faculty is made up of distinguished scholars and renowned researchers. They're experts in their field and expert teachers too. They love the give and take of the classroom and revel in the progress their students make. In FMU's intimate academic environment, where small classes are the norm, you'll get to know a lot of these dedicated men and women. Some you will remember forever. The academic work and its rewards are why you are here. But there will be a time and place for play too. We have more than 60 different student organizations and field teams in 14 NCAA sports. A robust schedule of extracurriculars is a big part of each semester. You'll find space here for rest and relaxation. You'll make new friends and build relationships that last a lifetime. And then, almost as quickly as it all began, it will be over. You will graduate and move on to a life and career full of promise. You'll leave memories behind. You'll leave FMU. But you'll be welcome back anytime. Home is like that, you know. Welcome home. Welcome to FMU. Let me paint you a picture. All of the graduates, all of the faculty, all of the administration, all of the board of trustees is decked out in their regalia. Their black robes, their hats, their gold tassels. It's just a most beautiful picture of a very formal kind of occasion. And here we march into the gymnasium and the music is playing and the gym is packed. And as we come in and as you look up at all those people, you see families, huge families. You see not just mama and daddy and two brothers and a sister, but there's grandmama and granddaddy, there's the aunt and the uncle, they're the cousins, they're the next door neighbors. And you know why all those people are there? Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. And I can guarantee you that when you go to that graduation, you leave with a tear in your eye because it's so, so special.
the desire and the love to take care of people is something that you kind of have innate. You kind of just have that thing. Um, but Francis Marion gave me the principles and they taught me the core values. They taught me leadership qualities and they've just been foundational and offered a family that I can keep going back to. So even though my personal biological family didn't go to a university um, and I didn't really get any experience wisdom from them for that, I gained a family that could tell me all about college and even the afterlife of college by coming to Francis Marion. Um, and I'm not sure you would have that with you know, other universities. Throughout the nurse, the nurse practitioner program, you're already a nurse, and you're a devoted nurse, and you don't want to just quit. Um, and that's that was another thing I specifically picked this program was because I was able to look at the curriculum and know that I could work. I even asked a couple of the professors, one being Dr. Hopla, before I started the program, and even she told me, "Yes, you can still work while you do this." Um, and I did. I worked 40 hours a week, five days a week. Um, sometimes it had to be six, six days a week um, to get my 40 hours in, and I still did the nurse practitioner program. Um, it wasn't easy, but nothing worth having is easy. So, Which, the benefit of having um, classmates and professors that were both working and studying is, you know, we would get worked up and worried about how would we ever do this, um, and then they would say, well, you know, I can work these two 12-hour shifts on the weekends and then have the week to study, or a professor may say, well, you can get creative with your hours here, so you can tell that they've done this, you know, that you can tell that they've gotten creative with their time as well. Um, and then all of a sudden it doesn't feel like such a daunting task because again, you gain wisdom from their experience. We're just about ready for second half action here at the Smith Center in Peach Belt Conference basketball action with the Patriots going up against the UNC Pembroke Braves from right up the road in North Carolina. It was a very evenly matched first half, Paul. What'd you think? Well, uh, super evenly matched, and it really went back and forth. No team uh, with greater than a five-point lead. UNCP took that five-point lead uh, on really a drought on the Francis Marion side, six, seven possessions in a row Francis Marion couldn't convert it was turnovers it was a, a few errors and uh, credit Pembroke for that defense uh, but the result was the Patriots were working their way from behind the last couple of minutes uh, but a three-point drill from uh, the Patriots Gaither draws the Patriots to within one when they could have easily been down five six even maybe seven points because there was a flagrant two late in that first half so uh, the Patriots are in pretty good shape all things considered that actually could have been a six-point swing instead of a two-point swing and that particular uh, the Patriots fought it off defensively and a couple of missed free throws by Levi and we only got away with that flagrant two with a two-shot foul so uh, a two points in that particular situation so really good situation compared to how we played toward the end of that half, we finished the last two minutes fairly strong and find ourselves down by one. Yes, yes. So a good finish to the first half and a strong start to the first half for the Patriots. Um, and for the Braves, can't say enough about Spencer Levi. Nine rebounds already for uh, the Braves' six foot seven uh, starter. So we'll have to see if the Patriots can box him out a little bit and at least prevent 
those second chances for the for the Braves as we start up in the second half. And here we go. Pembroke starts off the second half with possession. Patriots look like they're still in that zone defense, 1-3-1. One, one. They've got a double team on the baseline and then back off of it. Dawson and Levi battle underneath the basket. Three-pointer, no good. Ball's knocked around, and Redparth comes away with it. It's one-on-one. -on -one. He goes in strong with the left hand, and he's going to get called for the offensive foul push-off as he made the basket. A lot of body contact, and Coach Edwards does not like that call. And I'm kind of with, I'm with uh, Coach Edwards on that one. I think that's either should be a no call either way, or even possibly uh, the foul on the defensive end. So uh, instead, uh, possession to the Braves and uh, uh, no score yet early on in the first in the second half. That's tough break for Redparth, who picks up his first personal foul. And we're going to have a we'll have a foul on the floor on Dawson. Dawson picks up his second personal foul. And already two fouls in the first half for FMU, not even a minute in. Uh, we got to keep an eye on foul trouble for the Patriots. Definitely was not a problem in the first half. Patriots only had seven uh, fouls against the entire first half. Pembroke drives inside. There's going to be a foul, and they're going to call... That's going to be on Gaither. He's going to pick up his second personal foul, and the basket was made by Jordan Ratliff, who's going to go to the line to shoot the bonus free throw. And kind of a rough turn of events uh, for the Patriots. First, uh, a foul call against Redparth, which could have maybe gone uh, the other way. Looked like it was going to be an and one. Yep, and instead it's uh, now the and one opportunity for number 11, Jordan Ratliff. He knocks it down. Patriots down by four. Dawson sets the screen. Gaither drives in the lane. Pump fakes goes up. And easy finish after he got the defender in the air. Yep, Gaither almost had too much time there. You can see that he had to hesitate to realize he had a lot of free time to easily lay that ball in. Two quick points for Gaither. Levi, top of the key now for the Braves. He gets it to the right elbow. Goes inside on Ochan. Turn around. Strong with the right hand. He knocks it down. And Levi showing some offensive prowess. Nice job by Levi. He kind of works his way down uh, on, the under, on the underneath to uh, try to post up. And eventually he gets that ball to go. Gaither for three. No good. Off of Levi's head. But rebound goes to McIntyre. Who started off strong and carried the Braves for a while. has been a little bit quiet offensively since then. And Ratliff for three. He knocks it down to the Patriots now. Down by seven points quickly here in this second half. And the Patriots forced the look that they wanted. The Patriots are trying to prevent Pembroke from going underneath. Pembroke traditionally, or at least this season, does not have a great three-point uh, percentage, but instead Pembroke kicks it out and drains that three-pointer, and now they've got their biggest lead of the game. Seven points, 42-35 is our score. Patriots down by seven. They'll have the ball when we come back. This is the Patriot Sports Network.
Back-to-back -back turnovers, and we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of six points, possibly, on uh, those turnovers. Yep, and for the Braves, they're turning to the fast break to put pressure on the Patriots. It's a look that the Patriots haven't seen most of the game. Instead, uh, the Pembroke Braves have normally backed off and taken the ball to half court. Now they're driving the lane. It's a very different look that the Patriots need to get used to because uh, until it gets stopped, Pembroke's going to keep with that. Well, the last two turnovers have also been in the backcourt, so it's been easy. There's been nobody uh, that they've had to go through, so it's been one-on-one, -on -one, one on two when they steal the ball that far away from the opponent's basket. So it's it's been leading toward the fast break, which they really haven't had to deal with much until that. So we need to protect the ball, and that should uh, a defensive rebound doesn't lead to fast breaks as much as a steal out in the in, in the backcourt. Yeah, you're right. Uh, one good way to slow that up is to not give up the easy turnover, you know, and that's just that's another component of the Patriots being down by seven here uh, when, I mean, you hate to say woulda, coulda, shoulda, but just a couple, they're a couple breaks away from being tied or even possibly having the lead here, uh, but uh, woulda, coulda doesn't score points. Right. You know, it's time, time for the Patriots to get it done, lest they risk this seven-point lead become a bit greater on the Braves' side. They really need to tighten up their play a little bit. The last two turnovers have been unforced. It wasn't really, it was a bad decision by the Patriots that caused those two turnovers, and we need to clean that up a little bit. First free throws up, front iron, no good. And Lazane with the unfortunate miss on the, on the front end, and uh, we'll see how he looks on the second. Second one's up, and he knocks that one down. So the Patriots, their biggest deficit of the game at eight points. Haven't heard a lot from Gaither in this half after a strong first half. So now here comes Gaither. He's going to force the subject. And, and there it is, uh, the, the teardrop uh, pull-up two-pointer right from uh, maybe about 10 feet from the rim. I'm happy to see a solid possession that time by the Patriots. Nice pass inside by Levi, and a good finish that time by Ratliff. Uh, movement without the basketball critical there for the Braves. Nice answer back from the Braves after the nice drive uh, from Gaither. Cox for three. Shotzi, he knocks it down. And Cox with another three-pointer in this ball game. He's having a good offensive game. And those are big points uh, for uh, Cox and the Patriots to keep the Patriots within arm's reach. Only a five-point lead. Uh, make it seven on the drive from Levi uh, for the two-hand jam. Levi exerting himself defensively and offensively in this ballgame. Cox picks up the high screen, gets it out to Redparth. Redparth goes to Edmondson. Edmondson takes the 15-footer left side, short. Gaither comes away with the rebound. He goes reverse and gets blocked from behind by Spencer Levi, and I believe that's going to be a, a foul on... That'll be on Levi. Yep, kind of a, a, kind of a micro-touch. I think he got him on, on the wrist, on the hand uh, during the shot, so not much contact, but enough to draw the foul. Levi just asked the official what he did. The official said you got him with the body as you were coming from behind him, so they were giving him a little bit of the body foul there. Uh, and Gaither knocks down a free throw. And, boy, that's not, that's not what I saw, but, of course, hey, they're a little bit closer, and, and uh, you know, I, I, will, I will defer to the officials on this one. Well, I saw what you saw, but I'm just telling uh, our, our audience what the official just said as I, I saw him interact with Levi. And... Uh, Another free throw by Gaither, and the Patriots back within five. And the pa Patriots will take any points that they can, uh, kind of struggling in the second half to find their rhythm. Three-pointer, and it's buried by number two, Malik Sanders. Nice shot by Malik Sanders. Uh, kind of a, a similar shot to the one that Alex Cox drained in the first half. Redbarth takes it in, goes up strong. Puts it on the glass. He hits the deck. He'll go to the line and shoot a pair. This foul is going to be on. That'll be on number 35, Jay Hicks. That's his first personal foul. I like the drive that time by Redparth. If nothing else, it's starting to try to even up a little bit this foul disparity that we've seen. Patriots have six team fouls, only two for the Braves. 
Yes, yes, and uh, driving the lane uh, for Redparth and Gaither uh, can only free up three-point shots from uh, Cox and others later. As long as they force the Braves to respect the paint, then they'll have some room to kick it back out and maybe drain another three. We have multiple substitutions coming in for the Braves. We're going to see number zero, Trenton McIntyre, back in the ballgame, number 21, Nate Dunlap, and also number five, Cortez Marion Holmes. In for the Patriots, we've got Redparth shooting free throws. Anderson and Ochon in the lane. Cox and Gaither round out the floor squad for the Patriots. And Redparth knocks down his second free throw. And, and with, Dawson yeah. checks in now for the Patriots. And with Marion Holmes uh, with, into the game, 10 points, a trio of players with 10 for the, for the Braves in uh, Marion Holmes. Sanders and McIntyre each with 10 points. Patriots have three double-digit scores as well. 19 for Gaither, 10 for Redparth, and 11 for Cox. Sanders has it. They get it down to the baseline. Three-pointer and a rainbow of a shot that time by Hicks goes in. And the Patriots now down by nine. Well defended, but Hicks ignores the reaching arm of Gaither and drains that three-pointer. Dawson goes in strong. Too strong with the left hand once again. He has had a tough time offensively this evening. He's gotten to the rim, just cannot get it to go down. Only with two points this evening. Dawson usually a good finisher. Dunlop for three, no good, and Redparth comes away with it. I don't think head coach Richards liked that shot. Yep, and for... Uh, for Nate Dunlop, he had drained one in the first half, so he was kind of feeling that. But I think uh, for uh, Coach Richards, they wanted to move that ball around a little bit. Gaither forced the issue once again, gets fouled in side, and he'll go to the line again to shoot a pair. They called that foul on number 21, Nate Dunlop, his third personal foul. And there's an interesting back and forth. The, the coaches are actually talking with each other uh, in, in game about the play. It's a, a very, very interesting dynamic. Now, that doesn't surprise me out of Gary Edwards. He, 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 he's, a, he, he's a charmer. He could sell ice to an Eskimo. Uh, so it's no surprise he's having a conversation with the opposing coach during the game. And Gaither missed the second of those free throws. So eight-point lead still. Redparth looked at a three, drives baseline, spins, kicks it out. Dawson now takes it to 17 feet, takes the shot, no good once again, and the Patriots just cannot cut into that eight, nine point lead. And I think the Patriots were counting on that ball going down four different Pembroke Braves waiting to pull down and corral the rebound, and no one in sight for the Patriots to try to uh, box out on that one and uh, get the offensive rebound. But give the Braves some credit, knocking down three pointers left and right, uh, and they knock down another one, going way against their season average, just killing us from beyond the arc. Yep, and that one from Malik Sanders, nice shot from him, and uh, uh, Pembroke is doing a good job of working the ball from side to side to free up a three point shooter. In that case, it's Malik Sanders for the tray, and that puts Pembroke up by double digits. Gaser for three. Right on line, just too strong, and he comes up a little bit lame. We have a jump ball, and that's going to be possession. Patriots, we'll see what's wrong with Gaither. Oh, and Gaither's hurting, and he's being, he's being very, very tough out there. You can see he's kind of shaking. He's going to try to come off on his own power, uh, but, boy, that, that would really be a, a bummer for the Patriots to lose their top scorer nearly 24 points a game. Absolutely. Well, the Patriots will have possession when we come back. We've got 11-22 left in this ball game. Patriots find themselves down by 11 now, their largest deficit of the game. This is the Patriot Sports Network. The Small Falls Club is a fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Swamp Fox Club for their support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are back here at the Smith Center where the Patriots are down by 11, 11.22 to go in the ball game, where the Braves are just scorching us from beyond the arc. They're now 9 of 13 from, I'm sorry, they are, uh, they are 8 of 17 from beyond the arc. And, and at the half, they were 4 of 11. So uh, since then, 4 of 6 in this half. So uh, definitely lights out three-point shooting for the Braves. Redbarth drives inside, and we're going to have a foul. I'll take all the fouls we can get right now. That stops the clock and allows the Patriots to uh, get into scoring position. This one's going to be on the floor, so no, no free throws. But now the Braves have four team fouls. Inside, Redbarth gets some good position, and a little English knocks it down. And I think Redparth was trying to draw the foul on that, uh, but he couldn't quite do it. Good discipline by uh, Pembroke not to give up the end one, instead just two points for Redparth on that. Lead is cut from double digits down to nine. Mick. Malik gets the ball knocked away. And it is a Shot clock violation, good defense that time by the Patriots. Good defensive effort there. Yep. One thing I will say about the Patriots team in every game this season, no matter what's going on on the scoreboard or where the momentum is, they play hard all the time. And I don't see them ever drop their heads more than just a split second. Yep, and with a defensive run like that, they can get themselves back into it. And Shotzi! Redparth knocks it down. And, and shots like that from uh, Redparth and some good defense. And uh, now we're drawing it down to six. Uh, as many as 11 just mo moments ago, the lead for the Braves now down to six. Nice drive that time by number five, Cortez Marion Holmes. Cox did a flyby on that one. I thought he might get a hand on the ball. Couldn't quite knock it away. And Holmes comes away with the deuce. Just inches away from that one. Cox for three, left side. Shotzi, Cox knocks down another three-pointer for the Patriots. And the Patriots pull within five with 9.50 to go in the ball game. Good on Cox there. Uh, he's, he's got the look right now. He's got that feel and uh, the confidence more than anything else. Uh, good rebound, though, by the Braves. And there's a two-pointer to respond to Cox's three. So uh, Patriots can't seem to get the score and the stop. Pa the Braves just continue to answer back uh, point after point. That was, that was unfortunate. Hill came in off the bench, and he put up a three-pointer. Didn't really do anything. It was uh, a tough rebounding opportunity. Pembroke comes away with it and gets the deuce. So that actually, I didn't see what Coach uh, Richard saw, but he was awfully upset after that possession. Even though they did score, he called a timeout and wanted to have a, a word with his squad. Yep, he didn't like the look, and uh, whatever it was, you could tell. And uh, that's a sign of a good coach, is that he's looking to uh, make sure that they're playing the right way, regardless if, if a basket goes down. He knows that that basket later on isn't going to make, and maybe they need to change some things up uh, to get things on the right side, even though in that case it was right off of a score for the Braves. Something positive happened, but he saw something negative, and he wanted to get it squared away uh, very quickly. So quick timeout there by Richards, and we're back on the floor. Anderson running the point for the Patriots right now. Man-to-man -man defense by the Braves. Gaither crosses over, gets it inside, goes up with the right hand, and teardrop goes in. Nice job by Gaither. Gaither tweaked his ankle a little bit a few moments ago. He's back out on the floor and driving and slashing as usual. Great shot by him. Step back three, no good. Cox comes away with it. There was a lot of body contact. They let it go, but Cox... Corrals it for the Patriots. Skip path. Red Barth. He takes the three. Left side. In and out. No good. Kept alive. And Ochan comes away with it. Red Barth. He goes in the lane and goes up strong. Ball's block. Gets it. And now we finally have a foul inside. Levi, I think, took the ball away cleanly. But I think the foul is going to be on 
Oh, they're going to call it on Spencer Levi. Okay, maybe on the takeaway, and uh, he's going to ask the officials again, hey, where did I get him? And uh, uh, this time they're just going to play on. Uh, now, I like a play that happened midway through that possession. Ochan took down the rebound, and instead of putting it on the floor, he immediately kicked it out to a ball handler. That allowed for the Patriots to come back, move it around to Redparth, and now Redparth's going to have a chance uh, at the one-and-one -one here. He knocks down the first one. Redparth, an 86% free throw shooter, leads the team. Right behind him is Gaither at 85%. Yes, and pardon me, it was a shooting foul. So, of course, uh, Redparth with uh, two shots uh, making the front end. But, of course, uh, a, relaxed, uh, a relaxed key for that first shot because he was going to get two strokes. Spencer now has three personal fouls. It's not critical, but with 8.55 to go, he needs to be a little bit because he's been a major factor on the boards for the, the Braves. He's been a fantastic factor, and if the Patriots could somehow draw one more foul out of him, uh, boy, now the Patriots might be in business because that, that would take away or at least uh, slow the aggressiveness of a big man underneath, allowing Ochan to score, but even more importantly, Gaither to drive, Redparth to drive, and uh, that could really loosen up uh, and, and unlock a Patriots offense. Spencer has it. Hands it off. McIntyre. Radcliffe. He loses the ball. Cox has it. He's got his head up. He drives all the way and finishes underneath Spencer. Fantastic drive that time by Cox. And he had to maneuver around Spencer, who was up for the block. Good on Cox for the ball control, body control in the air, lays it in, and the Pats are back to within one here with eight minutes to go. That's going to be a blocking foul. Oh, Coach Edwards wanted the offensive foul. He thought that Gaither was planted and set. Boy, he is livid over there. They're going to call that one on Langston Gaither. So it's Levi will go to the line. He got the hoop. And that's been part of the battle has been uh, the Patriot guards uh, trying to uh, man up against Spencer Levi. Uh, and Levi has really kind of had his way on the offensive end as well. And uh, could have been a blocking foul there. Uh, or pardon me, could have, could have been the charge, but instead we the call is the blocking foul against Gaither. And... Uh, a free one for Levi. So Cox is going to get a little bit of breather. I guarantee you Alex Cox will be back on the floor the way he's been shooting the three lately. And UNC Pembroke can go back up by four points with this free throw attempt. Only a 54% free throw shooter this season. Levi misses that one, and Dawson comes away with the board for the Patriots. Gaither is going to bring the ball up the floor. For and, FMU. And that was a huge rebound by uh, Dawson. And uh, you can see he was well above the rim to snatch that ball uh, away and corral it so that the Patriots can uh, secure the offense here. Ochon tried to feed it inside to Dawson. It gets knocked away by one of the Braves. It will stay possession with the Patriots. Well, the Patriots were down by 11 just a couple of minutes ago. Now they're only down by three with possession with just under eight to go. Yep, they stepped on the gas. Uh, Gaither had stepped out for a moment, and uh, Gaither gathered himself, got himself back on the floor, uh, made a bucket, and kind of willed the team back into it. And it started with that drive from Gaither uh, when he had just stepped in, a little bit of a slashing shot. It, that drew them to within seven. A Cox three and some good defense, and now the Patriots are within three and possession here uh, at the media timeout. And we'll see what happens when we come back. 7.53 to go in this ball game. Patriots down by three with possession. This is the Patriots Sports Network.
Here we are back at the Smith Center. Redparth inbounds the ball to Anderson. And the Patriots set up. Redparth goes down the left baseline. Kicks it outside. Ochan from 17 feet. Rattles around no good. And McIntyre comes away with the rebound. Probably not the best look that the Patriots were looking for. Ochan was open, but he was open for a reason. The Pembroke is not defending him outside of the paint because he is not a major threat from mid-range and further. And that was a very random offensive set that time. Pretty good defense by the Patriots. Uh, McIntyre got himself caught up a little bit on that right elbow and couldn't figure out exactly what to do. Put in a, a runner that was way short, and it went off of Spencer uh, Levi and went out of bounds. Yeah, he was definitely handcuffed there. Uh, and kind of, kind of, He kind of lost control. One of those rare situations for him, he had been sure most of the game. So kind of a rare, unforced mistake by McIntyre. Redparth, a lot of congestion out there. Darius with the high screen. Redparth goes in, backs it up, and jams it off the glass in as he was falling down. Fantastic so, play by Redparth to get down underneath, fall back, and knock it down. And uh, you might have seen some contact there, but uh, no call. Nice move that time by Ratliff as he drove in and got the ball over Dawson, who was looking for the block there. Three-pointer by Dawson. Shotzi and Dawson knocks it down. Darius with his first three-pointer. Boy, oh boy. And uh, just what the doctor ordered. I know I've said that before, but tied at 67. And it wasn't looking like the Patriots could get it back. And uh, of all players, Dawson with the three to knot it. Inside. Once again, McIntyre loses the ball. I'm sorry, that wasn't McIntyre. That was Holmes. The Patriots come away with the steal. Gaither has it. They clear away. Gaither works on Levi. Smart play by Gaither. He backs it out, and the Patriots reset the offense. He's got Spencer, Levi, uh, far away from the basket. Levi with some really good defense. Yep, and Gaither trying to ISO against Levi. Let's see how that goes. And a three-pointer left side. Shotzi and Anderson knocks down his second three-pointer. The Patriots up by three. Oh, fantastic work. Gaither was defended, so... Uh, Instead, kick it out to Anderson. Anderson with the three. And you can hear the fans getting excited. The Patriots have taken the three-point lead and possession and momentum. Here's Gaither. And Gaither gets called for the travel in transition as he knocks down the three. Unfortunately, that would have put the Patriots up by six. But instead, turnover goes to the Braves. Well, and the Patriots just need to continue to press, need to keep that momentum, and uh, Gaither a little bit of a shuffle step there, uh, so uh, no go, but you can see Gaither feels it. He had drained that three uh, despite the whistle against him. So the Braves have it. Ratliff, he takes it to the top of the key. He pulls back, in and out, no good. Levi with the rebound, goes up strong, and he's going to get the hoop and the harm. And... That's going to be on Dawson. We're going to see Ochon back in. And for Spencer Levi, really, really having his way underneath. A nice job by him. And uh, uh, two points for Spencer Levi, and he gets the free throw. So Levi has an opportunity to tie this ball game up with just over five minutes to go. And five players in double digits for Pembroke. And uh, count it for Levi. And yep. all in double digits, McIntyre, Ratliff, Levi, Sanders, and Marion Holmes. It wouldn't have mattered if he'd missed that free throw anyway. We had a lane violation. They would have gotten another opportunity. But he takes it, knocks it down, and ties the ball game up at 70. Deep three by Anderson. Shotzi, he knocks down a second in a row. And Anderson surely is feeling that. Anderson... Already with uh, three three-pointers on the game. And he picks up a silly foul 35 feet away from the basket. And that's going to put number zero, Trent McIntyre, on the line. Not what you want to do. And the momentum was all Anderson, but I think Anderson got a little bit pumped up and got a little bit uh, overly aggressive on defense coming off of that great possession with that three-pointer. 
This is the last one and one what the Braves are going to shoot because they'll be in the double bonus from here on out. And McIntyre makes it a moot point anyway with making the first free throw. He's a 72% free throw shooter. He's perfect on the afternoon or evening. And that double bonus is key, key, key for Pembroke. Uh, so uh, the Patriots are going to have to watch it because uh, every harm is going to result in a player going to the line for the Braves. And another unforced error by the Patriots. Gaither taps himself. He just nonchalantly threw the ball in thinking, oh, it's a, uh, it's a normal inbounds play. And Pembroke went ahead and made the easy steal. A bad mental lapse that time by the Patriots gives Pembroke another opportunity to take the lead. They go inside. And Cox is going to get called on the floor. It's going to be a double bonus. Levi will go to the line. He'll shoot a pair. But if we're going to foul somebody, I guess Levi's the person we want to foul, even though he did make his last free throw. He's only a 54% free throw shooter on the season. So... Yep. And that's four on Cox. So uh, Cox now uh, at, at real risk here of fouling out a, a key three-point scorer, a key scorer and guard for the Patriots. And uh, sure enough for Levi to uh, miss that. Uh, fortunately, the Patriots hang on to a one-point lead, at least for the moment. Patriots have to really focus on rebounding on this one. And the free throw's up, and he knocks down one of two that time, going about his season average. And the Patriots get this one in bounds this time without turning it over. Anderson goes over deep on the left wing. Pembroke's move to the zone defense. They're playing a 2-3. Gaither stutter steps, gets to the left elbow, air balls it, and Ochan thought he got it off of Hicks, but he had stepped on the baseline to jump out of bounds, and Patriots don't come away with points on that possession. Yep, and that zone is a unique look that uh, the Patriots haven't seen a whole lot of. I think they're counting, uh, the Braves count on Spencer Levi handling the paint and then zoning up uh, throughout the rest of the court. Ratliff, deep on the left wing. They get it inside. Levi goes up strong and goes over the top of Gaither. He scores easily. And once again, Levi having a monster ball game on the boards and on the scoreboard. Gaither, Redparth, he takes a three, left side. Shotzi, he knocks it down, and the Patriots back up by one point with 3.30 to go in the ball game. And with a man in his face, he, it doesn't matter to him. He takes that left, left, lefty stroke, and it's a beautiful stroke, and uh, the Patriots up by one. Ratliff gets it into Levi. He finds a cutting Pembroke Brave, and we have a foul on the interior. The Patriots just could not corral that offensive board or that defensive rebound, and so Ochan is going to get a personal foul. That's going to take us to a media timeout. So the Patriots clinging to a one-point lead here, 76-75 with 3.13 to go in this ball game. There'll be free throws on the UNCP side when we come back after these messages. This is the Patriot Sports Network. The Swanfons Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Swanfons Club for their support. Thank you. 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 Back here at the Smith Center, I'm Hubert Setzler along with Paul McDonald. Paul, uh, we really, uh, these last three home games that we've called, have all come down to the wire. 
Uh, the Patriots won one at the last shot. They lost one on the last shot. And now it looks like we're going to come down to something fairly similar. It looks like it's going to be a one or two possession ball game as we come down the stretch here. Yes, and that actually speaks uh, to something we were discussing earlier on, which is the balance in the Peach Belt this season. Uh, second place is deadlocked with four victories, and you got the Patriots and Pembroke at 500. If the Patriots were to, were to win this one, they'd move into a four-way tie, at least at the moment, for second place. So great balance in the Peach Belt. It's no surprise this is coming down to the wire. And Levi rattles that one. He hit every part of the rim multiple times on that one and gets it to go down. So that was a big point for the Pembroke Braves, tying the ball game up at 76. On the floor for the Patriots, we're going to have Dawson, Anderson, Gaither, Redparth, and Cox. Second free throws up, and he rattles that one home. So Levi, 2 of 2 from the charity strike that trip, gives the Braves the lead. And another... Another unbelievably lazy play by the Patriots, and I will start to pile on them a little bit now. I'm usually as positive as I can be, but they have had mental lapse after mental lapse on really simple things. Yep, and this one was on Anderson. Anderson just completely uh, overlooked it, and then uh, he goes with the foul to give the and one. At the very worst case, maybe he gives up two points, but instead three and the foul. So, uh, but, you know, harm got a, a mistake was compounded uh, because of that situation. And so the Patriots now find themselves down by three and possibly four after we get this free throw. And the Patriots have turned the ball over in that spot three times in this half. Just lazy plays inbounding the ball, uh, getting it out to the outlet uh, uh, player, we really need to secure and put our head on a swivel and just think that one was just a huge, lazy mental lapse play. That's right. That was a, that was a head down inbound a, a, with an assumption that a player would be there and not even. And, and Pembroke noticed that that that, that 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 it was not an attention, a full attention inbound, makes the steal and uh, two points plus the free shot. So we're going to have number 23, Lassane, on the free throw line. He shoots it, rattles it, no good. And fortunately, the Patriots come away with it. Red Parth. Cox has it. Back to Red Parth. The Patriots lucky to be down only by three after that exchange. High screen by Gaither. Dawson's going to come out. Doesn't get the screen. Dawson goes in strong and comes up, and it's blocked by Levi, who also gets the rebound. Yep, more, more defense from Levi. Mm. Levi's doing it on both ends of the court. The block and the rebound on defense, and uh, the score here a moment ago, uh, it's been all Levi all the time for uh, the Braves here in the latter minutes of the second half. Levi has it. He's working on Dawson. He goes up strong with the left hand, can't get it to go, and saves it. They reset the shot clock. I didn't think he caught the rim on that one. Yeah, I don't think he did either. That that uh, uh, that that could have been a situation where, uh, where where you could have seen a shot clock violation. Instead, uh, benefit to the to Pembroke, and they get the score. Anderson gets it over Dawson. Thought about a three. Redparth. And the Patriots slow it down for a second. Dawson works on Levi. He backs it up. Five on the shot clock. Redparth with the teardrop, and he gets it to go down. And that's a big one for Redparth, and uh, it wasn't looking too good. But, uh, hey, you trust Redparth uh, for a possession like that. He had a good command of knowing what the shot clock was. He came right in, and with that sweet lefty shot, makes an eight-footer. And that pulls us within three with a minute and a half to go in this ball game. We'll see what happens down the stretch when we come back after this message. This is the Patriot Sports Network.
Well, definitely nothing has come easy here at the Smith Center over the last three home games for the Patriots. They're a fighting squad. A couple of mental mistakes here in this second half, especially late, have cost the Patriots the lead that they had. Uh, again, another turning point, and it happened with Gaither getting called for the travel as he knocked out a three-pointer, which would have put the Patriots up by six, and then the next thing you know, uh, we turn the ball over, and... Pembroke capitalizes. Yes, and uh, Pembroke has done a good job of capitalizing on any turnover that the Patriots have uh, created, so uh, good on them to uh, turn uh, mistakes on the Patriots into scores uh, on the Brave side. We're going to have a foul, I believe, called. I think it was a little bit late on the call. There could have been one when Redparth hit the deck the first time. Well, that's going to be on number 23, Dewan Lassane. Redpath did a good job of not traveling as he was on the floor. And still, and, and they had that free, th they, they had that foul to give. Still, uh, UNCP with only six fouls, so the next one would put the Patriots in uh, the bonus. Uh, but uh, the Pembroke has been in the double bonus for quite a while now uh, here in the second half. Gaither to inbound the ball. He gets it to Redparth. Still some tight defense played. Full court now, once again, by the Braves. Cox gets it over to Redparth. Redparth takes it to the elbow. Ochon has it now. He makes a move. And Gaither gets it, settles down. High screen by Ochon. Levi comes out on him. Wide open, Cox, right side. He puts up the three. Too strong, no good. Oh, that would have been a big one for the Patriots to tie it up. Instead, they got to go back and play some defense. Down by three, 34 seconds to go. Eight seconds separates the shot clock and the game clock. That's exactly what the Patriots were looking for. They got the wide open look, and then we're going to get Cox. Hey, yo, Rick, you, you need to upgrade yourself. And they're, they're going to call Cox away from the ball. That is his fifth foul. Uh, so uh, that's a big loss for the Patriots, and Cox is going to depart this game. Uh, he's He had just barely missed the three-pointer on the offensive end. Then he came back, and uh, kind of a kind of a touch-and-go call uh, away from the ball to be the foul out. So now Cox off the floor. We'll have to see what uh, Coach Edwards draws up. Well, we'll probably see Anderson come out for his three-point shooting ability. He's got three, two of them here in this second half. He's got 11 points on the evening. So that was a tough break, a really good working offense uh, by, that, uh, by the Patriots that time. They got exactly what they were looking for, and Cox just couldn't quite get that one to go down. Free throws up, and Patriots down by four now with 26. That's a, that's a tough one. That makes it a two-possession game. Yep, tough spot for the Patriots, but now what that means is that it, they, that it kind of opens up the offense for the Patriots. They can score a quick two or a quick three here. It doesn't make a difference. They've got to get two possessions back. And a missed free throw. Redparth has it. He gets it to Gaither. Gaither's going to have to hurry. Down by four. He loses the ball. Stolen away. And Gaither pulled up lame with 10 on the shot clock. Uh, And Ochon gets the steal. And there's only 1.5 seconds to go. Patriots uh, down by two, and this game is over. So that was a big victory. And again, the Patriots fall just a bit shy here at home by a score of 80 to 82. And that's going to drop the Patriots to three and four in the Beach Belt Conference. And UMP, UNC Pembroke is going to go to three and two in the Beach Belt, three and three overall. Boy, another tough break that time for the Patriots. Kind of a rough run down the stretch. Uh, it, it, the the, uh, the the trickle down effect really started with uh, Alex Cox missing a three pointer that would have tied it. It was in and out. He comes back gets the kind of the touch foul. He gets knocked out. Now the Patriots have to make some changes. After that, it was all Pembroke. 
the Patriots need to play with a little bit more composure down the stretch. They made three really bonehead type mistakes that cost them probably this ball game uh, when they gave, just giving up possessions right down the stretch. A lot of just turnovers underneath their own basket. Yep, uh, they were inbounding after a UNCP basket and uh, two of those uh, three turnovers you're, you're mentioning, if I recall, mm -hmm. were just on straight up inbounds from really from not paying attention. Uh, Pembroke was paying, playing more of a, a soft man full court but definitely giving room for that ball to be inbounded. If it had been done crisply, no doubt both of those turnovers could have been averted, and uh, that's at least four points that you can count off of those turnovers, uh, let alone any other mistakes. And I hope uh, that Gaither is uh, okay. He had been favoring that ankle early on, and then he went down when he turned the ball over on that last possession, uh, and he came back limping. It looked like he was a little okay when he was walking off the floor, but we'll find out more about his uh, status in the next couple of weeks or the next week or so. They say the star of the game for the Patriots uh, was selected, and it is Holden Redparth. He had 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 assists on the game, so a very good scoring line. He was uh, relatively quiet for the first 10, 15 minutes of the ball game. Yeah, you know, he, he stepped on the gas late, uh, you know, only, uh, only 8 points at the half. Uh, I believe, and then he stepped on the gas, he came out, he made some three-pointers, and again, I can't speak enough about his defense, uh, nine rebounds, so uh, that stat line, fantastic uh, for him. Let's take a look at that stat line. We had, uh, again, that score was 80-82 to 82 with uh, the Braves coming away with a victory. They were 29 of 54 from the floor. That's 54%. 8 of 20 from the three-point line. A lot of that happened in the first part of the second half, and then they cooled down a little bit. They missed their last three three-pointers that kept us in the ballgame, but they still shot 30, uh, 40 percent from beyond the arc. They were 6 of 24 from the free-throw line, about 67 percent. They out-rebounded us by one, 32-31. Eight of them were offensive. We had 10 offensive rebounds ourselves. Uh, let's see. Yep, and if I could talk about the free-throws for a minute, mm -hmm. Pembroke was in the double bonus for a good 10 minutes of, well, about eight minutes of the second half. And as a result, they have nearly twi they had nearly twice as many free throw attempts, 24 attempts to Patriots only had 13 all game. So the differential there came down to some fouls, some extra shots, the, the free throw difference, 16 scores on free throws for Pembroke to only 10 for the Patriots. There's your six-point difference right there. Oh, the, the free throws definitely were the, the deciding factors because uh, Pembroke only had one more field goal than the Patriots. The Patriots were 28 of 60 from the floor. That's 47 percent. They were 14 of 27 from the three-point line. So they were very. Uh, they shot 52 percent from beyond the arc. Immaculate there. But there you go. There's your free throws. Um, yep. 24th free throws right there. Yep. And really, it comes down to those turnovers. Uh, you know, and the you know, it's one thing if it's a forced turnover, and you can credit Pembroke on that. Uh, but uh, a couple of the unforced turnovers. But you got to give credit uh, to uh, Pembroke on this, and particularly the defense of Spencer Levi. Now, 14 rebounds on the day, five of them offensive, and then uh, it, for him, the points leader, and he had his way underneath with 18 points on the day, and there were stretches where he was just completely unstoppable posting up against the Patriot defense. A massive double-double with 18 and 14 for that young man in his senior season as uh, a Pembroke Brave. And uh, it was nice to watch him have a good game. I wish it hadn't been against us in that particular manner. But uh, he's been a, a good, solid player for them. And it seems like he's a quality young man. I don't know him personally, but he's always conducted himself on the floor very respectfully and uh, shown a lot of integrity on the floor. He doesn't, doesn't do any showboating or anything like that, which I don't really care if you do or not. But when you don't do that kind of stuff, it says a little uh, a bit about uh, what you're trying to accomplish on the floor as well. It does. And he had good rapport with the officials. Uh, I watched an interchange between he and an official. He was unsure about a free throw or uh, about a foul against him. But instead of getting super animated, he, he was in a very calm manner and just, you know, how did I get him? Uh, the official motion, uh, you got him with the body. And, and instead of any sort of argument, instead he just nods it off. Okay, I know, and I'm going to press on. So uh, you, you really got to credit his uh, character as well as his uh, scoring and defensive effort out there on the floor. Absolutely. Well, we are going to be away from the Smith Center for the next two ball games. So Saturday we're going to play at Columbus State. That's only going to be a men's game. Uh, 
Columbus, the women's team can't play at the moment, so we won't have a women's team playing there. But I think both teams are slated to play next Wednesday, February 3rd, at Augusta, and then we will be back home here two Saturdays, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, February 6th, against Clayton State. And that Clayton State game is going to be um, fairly big for us because on paper, it's one that we're supposed to win. So we've got, I hate to say that because everybody in the Peach Bell Conference has been competitive, but that'll be one where at home we should win. So we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're not out of it for sure, but this was a, a big loss for us today. Uh, another game where the Patriots are in it right to the end. I love the heart of this team. I like the way they compete. I like the way they don't stop competing. Um, just a couple of uh, brain bubbles right there at the end, and this is a different story. Yeah, a few brain bubbles, and but you got to credit uh, Gaither. Gaither actually t uh, turned an ankle, and yet he was still the one uh, chasing the uh, offense around, trying to get that foul to stop the clock to no avail. Uh, but there he was, giving the most effort, and he could have packed. He, he could have packed it in, saying, "Well, you know, hey, I got a bad ankle. This hurts." You know, you could see him pressing through, and uh, that thing's going to swell up tonight. But uh, you know, can't be anything but proud of his effort out on the floor, despite the two-point two point loss uh, on the night. This uh, Patriots team has a great deal of talent on it. I like watching them play. And uh, I'm impressed with what I've seen so far this season, and I can't wait till they come back home on February 6th. So that's going to wrap it up here at the Smith Center um, this evening. Once again, the Patriots lose a nail biter by two points, and they fall to three and four in the Peach Belt Conference. The Braves uh, launch out to three and two. So we'll be back here in about a week and a half. Uh, for Paul McDonald and the rest of the broadcast team, this is Hubert Setzler, and this is the Patriots Sports Network. Good night. Choosing a college isn't easy. There are lots of choices to make and so many variables to consider. How do you know when you've found just the right place? The right college will make you feel at home, and that begins with a sense of place. At Francis Marion University, we have a beautiful campus that's safe, well-maintained, and filled with smiling faces. It's the kind of place where you feel you belong, where you wake up in the morning and know that the day ahead will be one you'll savor and enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean life at FMU is easy. There will be challenges. Hard work is expected. We take our academics seriously. You should, too. Earning one of our degrees is a real achievement, but some toil, some time invested in a difficult task, that's okay. That's how you grow, how you become someone. FMU is a comprehensive public university, and when it comes to academics, our students have a wide range of choices. We offer more than 75 majors and courses of study. Our professional schools in healthcare, engineering, business, and education are all well-known and respected across the state. At the same time, the arts and the sciences remain the core of what we do. They are the perfect foundation for a successful career and a meaningful life. Programs are important and will continue to work to produce new curriculum that meets the needs of our changing world. But we also know that a great education is less about what is taught and more about who is doing the teaching. FMU's faculty is made up of distinguished scholars and renowned researchers. They're experts in their field and expert teachers too. They love the give and take of the classroom and revel in the progress their students make. In FMU's intimate academic environment where small classes are the norm, you'll get to know a lot of these dedicated men and women some you will remember forever. The academic work and its rewards are why you are here. But there will be a time and place for play too. We have more than 60 different student organizations and field teams in 14 NCAA sports. A robust schedule of extracurriculars is a big part of each semester. You'll find space here for rest and relaxation. You'll make new friends and build relationships that last a lifetime. And then, almost as quickly as it all began, it will be over. You will graduate and move on to a life and career full of promise. 
you'll leave memories behind. You'll leave FMU, but you'll be welcome back anytime. Home is like that, you know. Welcome home. Welcome to FMU. Hi, everybody. I'm John Sweeney, Francis Marion class of 2009. This university means a lot to me. The people that I met and the experiences I had here, I cherish to this day. Over the next couple of minutes, I want to take you on a tour of this university that means so much to me. I want to show you my university. The first thing I'll mention and I imagine it's the first thing you'd notice is that Francis Marion is a beautiful place. It's just outside the city of Florence, but the university is not in the city. It's in a rural setting. It's pretty, peaceful, and safe. FMU's main campus is carved out of some 400 acres of former farms and forests in a delightfully natural way. We're under a canopy of mature trees. Thousands of native plants were cultivated to form an attractive landscape that FMU students pass through every day. The campus is beautiful year-round, but the azaleas are particularly amazing in the spring. It's a beautiful place to visit, but it's an even better place to go to school. And you are here to go to school, to learn and grow as a person. That will happen here at FMU. Now, we have some terrific laboratory and classroom spaces. Come on, let's go take a look. This is Founders Hall, our main classroom building. I spent a lot of time here. McNair and Leatherman are home to the sciences. I didn't spend a lot of time here. Nope, not here either. Now this looks familiar. Welcome to the Hyman Fine Arts Building. A new Honors Center is currently under construction on campus, and in the past few years, FMU has built an impressive presence in downtown Florence. This new campus includes the FMU Performing Arts Center, the Carter Center for Health Sciences, University Place, and coming soon, the Leatherman Medical Complex. And in the near future, we'll begin work on a freshwater ecology lab not far from the main campus. We've even got planetariums and simulation labs. But academics here are about more than buildings. They're about community, about people. You form bonds with classmates and professors, and the classes are great. Our professors are experts in their fields, and they love to be in the classroom. You'll learn a lot about the major you choose. You'll hear more about that later and you'll learn a lot about life. Francis Marion is an interesting place with a diverse student population. We have older students who are coming back to study for their second career and lots of hardworking students with jobs both on and off campus, which means there are some commuters here, but many of our students live right here in our residence halls, which means we have a rich on-campus environment. The forest villas are modern apartments with nice amenities. But a lot of upperclassmen love the village apartments, Francis Marion's original student housing. They're conveniently located to campus, the outdoor pool is right next door, and they have recently been remodeled and upgraded. An assortment of eateries, snack bars, and coffee shops provide needed fuel. The Smith University Center, the largest building on campus, is a great place to hang out and blow off a little steam. Our 60-plus student organizations add to the mix by hosting a wide range of events throughout the year. Everything from FMU's Got Talent to the President's Bowl Quiz Tournament to First Friday and the annual student competitions at Arts International. It is a good thing they didn't have these when I was here. I wouldn't have ever left. Athletics plays an important role here at Francis Marion. We've got great facilities like Griffin Athletic Complex and lots of successful teams. FMU athletes have won five national championships in just 50 years, and we've produced dozens of legendary players. Our athletes come from across the country and around the globe. They add to the flavor of the student body. Athletes are always among our very best students. 
we think that's the way it should be. By the way, the very first game on this field pitted Francis Marion against the defending national champions from the University of South Carolina. I wonder who won that game. Oh yeah, I remember. Well, that's a quick look around campus. I didn't get a chance to show you everything, and we didn't talk about everything. Like this guy, our namesake, General Francis Marion. But hopefully I gave you an idea of what a wonderful place FMU is, and how much it means to alumni like me. This place is special. It's my university. Maybe you'll make it yours. Let me paint you a picture. All of the graduates, all of the faculty, all of the administration, all of the Board of Trustees is decked out in their regalia, their black robes, their hats, their gold tassels. It's just a most beautiful picture of a very formal kind of occasion. And here we march into the gymnasium and the music is playing and the gym is packed. And as we come in and as you look up at all those people, you see families, huge families. You see not just mama and daddy and two brothers and a sister, but there's grandmama and granddaddy, there's the aunt and the uncle. They're the cousins, they're the next door neighbors. And you know why all those people are there? Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. And I can guarantee you that when you go to that graduation, you leave with a tear in your eye. Because it's so, so special. The desire and the love to take care of people is something that you kind of have innate. You kind of just have that thing. Um, but Francis Marion gave me the principles and they taught me the core values. They taught me leadership qualities and they've just been foundational and offered a family that I can keep going back to. So even though my personal biological family didn't go to a university um, and I didn't really get any experience, wisdom from them for that, I gained a family that could tell me all about college and even the afterlife of college by coming to Francis Marion. Um, and I'm not sure you would have that with you know, other universities. Throughout the nurse, the nurse practitioner program, you're already a nurse, and you're a devoted nurse, and you don't want to just quit. Um, and that's that was another thing I specifically picked this program was because I was able to look at the curriculum and know that I could work. I even asked a couple of the professors, one being Dr. Hopla, before I started the program, and even she told me, "Yes, you can still work while you do this." Um, and I did. I worked 40 hours a week, five days a week. Um, sometimes it had to be six, six days a week um, to get my 40 hours in, and I still did the nurse practitioner program. Um, it wasn't easy, but nothing worth having is easy. So, Which, the benefit of having um, classmates and professors that were both working and studying is, you know, we would get worked up and worried about how would we ever do this, 
Um, and then they would say, well, you know, I can work these two 12-hour shifts on the weekends and then have the week to study. Or a professor may say, well, you can get creative with your hours here. So you can tell that they've done this, you know, that you can tell that they've gotten creative with their time as well. Um, and then all of a sudden it doesn't feel like such a daunting task because, again, you gain wisdom.